Welcome back, Neon Nation. I hope everyone is doing well. Today, we're talking about all the districts in Night City, as well as the sub-districts, what and who you can find in these districts, as well as all the details that are unique to each of Night City's vibrant locations. Night City is distributed into six main districts, which house a variety of sub-districts. We have Watson, Westbrook, City Center, Haywood, Santo Domingo, and Pacifica as the main ones, covering the most landmass in the city, with the surrounding badlands if you want to consider that a district. Our first stop in getting to know the districts better is none other than Watson. The district of Watson used to be the go-to locale in Night City, featuring everything from nightclubs to skyscrapers, to corporate offices to a top-end med center, and even the biggest black market in Night City. After the unification war and the subsequent return of Spiro Arasaka and his Japanese mega corporation, Arasaka bled all the other corporations dry, and as a result, helped gangs like the Maelstrom and Tiger Claws take their dispute with one another to the streets. Watson is now one of the worst off districts in Night City, which largely house low-income factory employees. Watson is also filled with roadblocks, brought about by the rich and mighty in the city center to help keep the poor and the desolate out of sight. Our first sub-district within Watson is Little China, which used to be an extension of downtown filled with Asian immigrants from Chinese diaspora during the late 2040s. At one point in Little China's history, there were plans to make this area a second city center. Legally, this also used to be the best place to obtain cyberware and body modifications, a title that has since been passed to Kabuki. Low and mid-tier corpos come here to indulge in the cheap casinos and to assert their power over the helpless and the homeless of this area. Although the sub-district is not claimed by any particular gang, you can find the Tiger Claws here from time to time. Our next location is Watson's Kabuki. Located right next to Little China, Kabuki is a maze of back streets and alleys that was once the prime location for Night City's Japanese medical corporations. Now Kabuki is one of the poorest areas of Night City with the exception of Pacifica, which is largely due to Arasaka's vice-like grip over the region. At night, Kabuki turns into a bustling market filled with shady characters and dealings. Illegal goods like implants, organs, combat drugs, steroids, prototype cyberware, synth viruses, and XBD brain dance recordings are all here as are some of the shadiest ripper docks in the city to supply you with illicit augmentations. Many of these vendors and shopkeepers are supplied by the Scavs, a ruthless gang who kidnap unsuspecting individuals to harvest their implants and organs for resale. Scavs have a complete disregard for human life and get rid of the corpses of their victims ruthlessly. Tiger Claws and the Maelstrom have a loose presence here, with the main gang presence being the Mocks. The Lizzie's Bar is comfortably nestled within Kabuki and is one of the most popular braindance clubs and brothels in all of Night City. The NID is up next, which is short for the Northside Industrial District, which was once a functional cog of intertwined factories and working class apartment blocks, but is now abandoned due to severe earthquake damage and lack of financial backing. There is no upward mobility here, but many Night City denizens end up entering the NID for the promise of at the very least a job. The Maelstrom run this district and hide out in these abandoned buildings, underground brain dance studios and warehouses. Their idea of r, &R is hitting the local bar, the Totentans, and letting the blood spill of anyone who looks at them the wrong way. The final sub-district in Watson is the Arasaka Waterfront, which was violently secured by Arasaka Corporation with its access to the main shipping ports of Night City. This is an area that is off-limits for non-employees and sees hundreds of shipments a month, which are all packed and sorted by automated robots to be shuttled off to other corporate warehouses. It is heavily fortified to keep all the scum of Night City out of their business and their bottom line. Our next district is Westbrook, an area that's largely touted as the best place to live in Night City. The areas of Westbrook suffered collateral damage from the nuke of 2023, with the sub-district of Japantown taking the brunt of the damage. The two decades which followed this cataclysmic event in Night City's history turned this locale into an empty husk, inevitably leading to it becoming one of the city's worst combat zones. Its restoration, however, meant that Asian corporations filled the former void with skyscrapers and massive buildings. Two of the sub-districts, Charter Hill and North Oak, became the pinnacle of Night City. Japantown in 2077 is crowded with tourists at all times of day. It's perfect for sightseeing with its myriad of restaurants, bars, gaming parlors, capsule hotels, and street food stands. After dark, Japantown turns into a perfect place to party and blow your eddies on all the frivolous activities offered around every corner. The Tiger Claws run Japantown after the sun sets and will not take lightly to those who step out of line. Forget to pay a bar tab, or worse still, dine in dash, and pray that you don't run into the wrong end of their katanas and tanto blades. Charter Hill are for ambitious corpos who are right at the cusp of the upper end of the hierarchy but who are not quite the top dogs yet. It's a relatively new and well-maintained district and houses mainly corpos, though the odd artist or musician who has a decent following are present. The crown jewel of Night City is North Oak, the newest and most luxurious part of the city. 
It used to be fertile land to the northeast of the city and after the nuking of Arsaka Towers, it soon turned into a destitute place filled with refugee camps and favelas. During the early 50s, this area was cleared by the government and through heavy tailoring of the narrative, was marketed as a new up and coming location. North Oak is now home to the untouchable elite, the top tier CEOs, investors, stars and musicians. This is a lush area filled with sprawling estates and home to the Arsaka mansion as well as Kerry Yerdine's personal villa. Some of these mansions enjoy their very own microbiomes and artificially sculpted landscapes as well as tennis courts, exclusive casino clubs and in-house brain dance arcades. Next up we have City Center, the heart of Night City. This was the site of the seminal event in the fourth corporate war with the destruction of Arsaka Towers which left a massive crater in the district. The rebuilding of city center has recently ended with the reconstruction of the Arasaka Towers in the 2070s which is surrounded by hulking skyscrapers and towering mega buildings creating an impenetrable fortress of glass and concrete. Corpo Plaza is home to Biotechnica, Petrochem, Kang Tao and ironically Militech and Arasaka who led to this district's demise many years prior. Corpo Plaza is where Memorial Park is, a roundabout in the middle of the corporate headquarters in honor of the victims of the fourth corporate war. Mid to low level corpos, corporate security and the NCPD all frequent this location and the airspace between the monolithic skyscrapers is constantly abuzz with the sounds of law enforcement aerodynes and corporate AVs. Next to the Corpo Plaza is the ever populated and newly reconstructed downtown. This area is home to apartments, hotels, restaurants and eccentric and elegant architecture. This is a district made up for the socialite and the corporate snob alike. Posh galleries, concert halls and high end strip clubs line the streets who invite the dense mobs out on the concrete with their overtly neon signage. From outward appearances, downtown seems like a relatively safe spot, but it is riddled with sketchy alleyways, home to crime, drugs, and sleazy characters slinging the latest black market brain dance chips. Next up we have Haywood, a district with a little taste of everything. The north of Haywood, closest to the Corpo Plaza and city center, features beautiful parks and modern architecture. Whilst in the south, the slums dominate the landscape, with gangs like the 6th Street and the Valentinos roaming the area. Haywood is often referred to the biggest bedroom in Night City because most of Night City lives here, with Latinos being the predominant ethnicity in this district. Well Springs is one of the safer areas featuring more modern buildings as the reconstruction efforts peaked here during its second phase. Apartments here are on the cheaper side, but because they are largely from the second phase of reconstruction, they have more curb appeal than your typical Night City apartment. The east of Well Springs features more dilapidated buildings pre-reconstruction. Valentinos are also prominent here with rumors of smuggling operations being heavily centered in this area. The Glen is the new home of the Night City government. It is a state-owned subdistrict that features a town hall, the mayor's office, home of Mayor Lucius Rhine, a court, and an NCPD station. Around these governmental buildings, the Glen is for the most part rich, clean, and crime-free. As you stray further away from City Hall, the gangs have a more dominant presence. Sixth Street and the Valentinos run these areas, and many of the businesses here are run predominantly by Latinos. The poorest part of Haywood is Vista del Rey, flooded with crime, poverty, and violence. Graffiti decorates what's left of the crumbling concrete walls and gangs are free to openly roam the empty streets as they please. Whilst not a combat zone, this subdistrict is a major eyesore for the wealthy elite who are right next door in North Oak and the corporate plaza. Santo Domingo is one of Night City's oldest districts who avoided much of the fallout and damage of the fourth corporate war due to its location. During the crisis, it was a provisional camp for Night City citizens and refugees looking for shelter. This population has since been dispersed into the city, meaning that 2077 Santo Domingo is now the testing grounds for industrial projects and the home of the city's power plants. This is a district that's constantly in flux due to the corporations acquiring different pockets of land in the area for investments and new projects. These sites are guarded by corporate security and drones, and the competition between corporations has hit a fever pitch. Arroyo is under constant construction, so much so that you can find a junkyard next to an old nuclear power plant next to a high-tech corporate factory. Arasaka and Petrochem have a dominant presence, but not all corporations find success here. Corporate security is essential here, otherwise gangs will start to creep into the nooks and crannies of corporate facilities, especially during construction. Workers from Arroyo live in Rancho Coronado, a self-sufficient town in Night City's borders. Cookie cutter houses line the streets in a similar fashion to mid 20th century American housing, filled with citizens that are tired of the hustle and bustle of deeper Night City or are heavily rooted in their factory jobs. There is a lot of infrastructure here for such a bare-bones sub-district with its own bars, schools, parks, restaurants, and even a metro station. The NCPD are spread too thinly to accurately monitor the suburbs, so the 6th Street Gang reigns supreme here. Pacifica was supposed to be a coastal retreat filled with tourist attractions, amusement parks, and white sand beaches. 
that is before the corporations looking to make this dream a reality pulled their funding during economic hardships. Nomads and Haitians who had escaped flooding in Haiti were recruited to build up the infrastructure as a cheap labor force. The Unification War of 2069 halted those plans and left thousands without work and a place to go. A Creole community led by the gang called the Voodoo Boys, a group of techno-mystical netrunners, unified the locals and set up their operations in Pacifica as their self-appointed leaders. In 2070, when the Unification War ended, the corporations tried to reignite the dream of a tourist mecca, but were met with the resistance from locals and the Voodoo Boys who had claimed Pacifica as theirs. The NCPD was called in and riots broke out, leading to the inevitable ceasefire from law enforcement as the resources spent at a mere potential was deemed not worthy. City council shut down all services to force them to leave, but the Voodoo Boys persevered. If you're an outsider, gaining the favor of the gang is a necessity to stay in Pacifica. Finally, we have the Badlands. The Badlands are the vast desert and plains outside of Night City, and the romping grounds of the Nomads, namely the Aldecaldos and the outcasts of the Nomad tribes, the Violent Raids. Oil fields dominate the area, while in the east, wastelands of chemical stews and rotting junk from various landfills fill the air with an unbearable stench. Acid rain due to pollution is very common here. In the south, there is an open desert, massive biotechnica protein farms, as well as a power plant. There are a ton of surprises out in the Badlands, but they are still largely shrouded in mystery. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and for more cyberpunk lore, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.